extraordinary thing with the day, and I would like to publicly apologise again <laughs> for my behaviour. It was totally unacceptable, and Danny, I do apologise profusely. <laughs> I'd also like to say that he came up to me afterwards and said that he really enjoyed it very much. <laughs> um, what I'd like to do is just sing you a song, um, and the music was written in the 1700s, and the words were written in the early 1800s. And uh, it was back in America for being too boring. It was recorded by Bill Ives, who was a custom the country of Western singer. And he was at a public show for singing in the public. But he did also record it. And Pete Pierce, who somebody may know was the partner of Britain, one of Britain's great composers of our century. And this is my interpretation of the Foggy Foggy Dew. This is all Britain. As I lay fast asleep, at the time, let me start again. I am a bachelor, I live all alone, and I work at the weaver's trade. And the only, only thing that I ever did wrong was to woo a fair young maid. I woo her in the summertime, and in the winter to woo.
sort of introduction to experts are all sort of um, It's sort of by a man called Norm Peel, as you know, the book has from the Board of Green and the United Policy. And he writes songs which are sometimes political, sometimes humorous, sometimes dramatic, sometimes in a book. Or all the three, indeed. Um, anyway, this is a song he wrote in the years when his wife used to have to go on to the mainland a lot to do teach training courses or something. This side. Okay, yes. <laughs> and he didn't really like going away, he missed her, he didn't really, you know, have very nice meals. And he said they were the three Ventos years because this was before you had microwave meals. And so he wrote the song, and it's, it's the official name, I think, is Home is Where the Dog Is, but it's also known as the Three Ventos song. And I like it because it reminds me of this, because he doesn't like me going away either. <laughs> and I used to not, I used to kind of say, no, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I used to find it that annoying, but I go on a nice singing weekend, it made me feel a bit guilty, but and then say he didn't want me to go. And, but now I kind of think that actually I'm really lucky that I've got somebody after all these years who still doesn't really like me going away very much. Anyway, I'm going to sing Yay. Anyway, this song sounds a lot better when it's got a guitar and all the stuff in the background. You'll just have to imagine that. So we're just going to sing it kind of vaguely like a pillar. <laughs> so this is Golden Square. It's Golden Square in the Little Kids. Uh, I miss you when you're missing, love you when you're gone. You think that after all these years that I can't get along. But I look around this empty house, still full of the memories that we grew. I can eat my fill of priors, drink full fat and abo, drown myself in beer, drink full fat coke and iron till my waistline disappears. But I look around this empty house still full of all the years we wandered through. And it's not home without you. Home is where the dog is. Home is where I keep you with my good. Home is where I love you.
es como Shalom 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 It's been the only choice Rejoice 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 Uh, you know, learning about Jesus' life on the 
and stuff and trying to understand all the miracles and all those things. And uh, I tried my best to do the same thing, but all I managed to do was turning beer into me. So I came up after a while. Um, I was a very curious child. I was always interested in science. Uh, I always had questions, right? Like, I remember asking my mom, like, don't you think it's a little bit funny that it's always somebody from planet Earth that wins the Miss Universe contest? You know, there's like, you gotta be more people out there, right? <laughs> um, well, when somebody gets like a bunch of equipment, like, uh, is there a wooden doll that's not screaming in pain, for example? But it cannot be just, just this one way, right? So my mother had enough of that, uh, and she would pray to me for the Christmas game, and uh, she would say, just keep asking stupid questions, and you stop if you are conscious, you, know, you want to get close for Christmas. I said, well, we're going to get denied on your side, you know, it's sad that all these types of problems, but, you know, they exist. Um, what else? Uh, oh, you know, like, I'm sure most of, you, most of you did as well, I, I love taking things apart when I was a child, anything. So that's why my parents stopped getting, getting to bed. <laughs> um, but like most of you, I had a place, you know, I had aspirations in life. And I wanted to be an American wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> you may wonder why I gave up, but well, I'm Spanish. <laughs> so, uh, that was a bad joke. Um, I don't always tell bad jokes, but when I do, he does have a lot. So, uh, anyway. My mother uh, was very, I have a brother as well, so my mother was very serious about our upbringing and uh, our nutrition and what we ate. And, um, so we were not allowed to eat any junk food, so once a week we were eating a piece of sugar free uh, cup. Right? Now that you have the answer to this country about the, uh, right, and like four out of five dentists recommend, right? It's just a little strange. It's like five or six Russian scientists think that the Russian bread is safe, right? Um, I hope I think that's a 5% of the statistics are made up anyway, so, yeah, who knows. Uh, I love Christmas, really. I, I love Christmas movies. Uh, Die Hard. Uh, uh, Gremlins. You know, great Christmas movie. Sure, no uh, There goes next to the Ice Bucket Challenge. Um, I love the presents, you know, all the labels. You know the label that says, you know, like, only for ages 4 to 99. So I can't imagine, I always imagine like this uh, lady, with a year old lady that has Lego bricks at home, what happens to her, right? <laughs> and we see that the Lego movie shows at her place and says, come on, grandma, get them up, you know, we have a slice of bricks on the top of the bed. You know, I was like, ah! So I don't know, it sounds a little bit arbitrary, but anyway. Um, then I grew up, I was growing up, I did security like most of you. <laughs> and if you have it, I grew up in a new wheel. And then you, know, you grow hair if you're a boy. Some girls probably do as well, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's like shaking. Back then, you know, um, had races like, you know, one blade, two blade. And now I just like Gillette, just have like three, four, five blades and stuff like that. And even recently, they have a, a razor that has a ball. So that actually shapes you more smoothly. I don't know what that even means, right? But you know, even the time right now, that it takes to the, the equation. I'm just waiting for the day that they put two balls on. Try not to put two balls on the face, but we'll see. <laughs> well, um, then it was like to go to university. Um, I studied in Barcelona. I uh, had to read in math. Um, it was a sad time for me. And, uh, you know, I thought that my family would be very sad to do it. I asked my mom, I said, what are you going to do when I'm gone? And she said, well, I'll, I'll just buy less food. <laughs> it was really sad indeed, right? But the university was a lot of fun. I learned a lot of really cool facts, like for example, I think in Mercury, if you don't know that, it's 1,409 hours long. Like any other, it's Monday on Earth. Ah. Alright? Um, the other thing I learned is that if you take the skin of an adult person and you extend it all over a flat surface, you make it change. <laughs> Okay. I had a funny feature to ask, to use to ask. What is 5Q plus 5Q? And somebody who goes, it's thank you. I don't want to get to say, you're welcome. I'm 
just, I'm just glad that he didn't ask how much it was. Cook you plus cook you. <laughs> it, it's something like dub. dub is, I guess the most of you have been to dub, right? They have this, uh, they have this computing system. Right? It's called dub. It stands for Dub in Area Rapid Transport. I'm just glad that dub is made of Frankfurt. No worry. Um, so, well, you know, then, um, I lived in London, university, I lived in Germany for a while. I was, it was very emotional and terrible for my family because I was moving away. So my mother basically cried, say, please don't forget us, why, you know, don't forget to cry. I say, no, ma, I won't, you know, it's everything's a skill. So, I never forgot. <laughs> and then I, uh, after a year and a half, I moved to New York, I lived in New York for about six years. One day, one day, for a close move with me and my colleagues, we in the lives in the structure of where we work, uh, we rearranged all the buttons. That job was wrong in so many levels. You can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that joke. As I said, you don't know, make next year if it's volunteer. Finally, I made it to London. I love London. I love London. Uh, oh. The other day,
which normally takes about uh, 90 minutes. Um, I hope you don't find this too serious. Uh, some of the things I'm going to tell you, you will say that they're not really true. Okay, the first uh, fact is that um, Kim Il sung who was the first leader in North Korea, um, he was uh, born on the same day as the Titanic sank. Perhaps that's an omen for the future of the country. They don't have the same kind of as we have. We have what is called the Gregorian or Julian calendar. They have something called the Jushin calendar. And the Jushin calendar actually started on the birthday of Kim Il sung which was 1912. So in North Korea, it is year 103. In 1985, they decided they would build the largest hotel, the tallest hotel in the world. It was called the Rio Jr. Hotel. It was going to be 1,100 feet high. It was funded, in fact, by the Italian sort of sort of. For a long time, in fact, they were uh, so concerned about the construction of the building that they used to airbrush it out of every printed media. And today, in fact, it will never be finished because it will not have any lifts. It's 1100 feet high, it's been built out of plum, so nobody will ever be able to climb to the top. In North Korea, you won't see anybody with long hair. Why? The regime says long hair, bad for intelligence. You may be surprised to know that North Korea is one of the world's largest suppliers of methamphetamines. So large, in fact, that it produces something like $500 million a year. The other way that they foreign currency is they are one of the world's foremost counterfeiters of US hundred dollar bills and Euro fifty dollar bills. They went out and they bought themselves a Heidelberg printer, which is the finest printer of its kind in the world, and the counterfeit notes that they produce are sent from unrecognizable uh, across the world in the US very recently. Both Kim Il sung and Kim Jong il were obsessed with they wanted to live forever. So they appointed a woman that's called Dr. Kim, and she created something called the Institute of Longevity. This employed 3,000 people who were anatomically identical to Kim Il sung and Kim Jong il. And they tried every possible medication in order to prolong the lives of the two people. And what they came up with was just two things. Kim Il sung, they told him, you will have to have blood transfusions every day, but they have to be with virgins. He had so many that he changed his blood. The second thing they discovered with him, with him or so was that he was sexually impotent. And so the 3,000 sisters they had were trying every possible medication. They came up with one. They said to him, for you to overcome your sexual impotence, you must eat the penis of a dog every day. But it must be a dog that has a seven centimeter piece. You can't let the skull. <laughs> Kim Jong Il was a remarkable child. We're told that he could walk at three weeks and he could talk at eight weeks. He was supposedly born in a log cabin in North Korea. The reality was that he was actually born in Siberia and his first language was Russian. But Kim Jong Il was tiny. When he was an adult, he was just five or two inches high. And he had a seven centimeter platform in his shoes to lift him up and boot more haircut. And he would actually say to, to foreigners coming over to the country to meet him, he would say, I'm as small as a midget's turd. <laughs> Kim Jong Il also, he wanted to be the world's finest comedy. So what did he do? There was nobody in North Korea who he felt was good enough to correct his films. So he decided he would kidnap the finest director and the finest film actress in South Korea. It was as if he had kidnapped Ridley Scott and Kate Winslet. And actually he kidnapped uh, Guy Bill who was the director, Joy, who was as famous in South Korea as Marilyn Monroe. And they were actually abducted in Hong Kong and they were kept uh, in a gulag for the first uh, two to three years of their uh, incarceration in the country. They were eventually released. Uh, Shin was given a, uh, a, a watch for his uh, uh, capture in a tiny little um, um, uh, hut uh, where he was kept prospered for something like two years. They were then released and actually they produced a number of films that actually won awards. Uh, I don't know if anybody has seen a film called Thomas 
summary, um, which was a ripple of Godzilla, but it actually won a film festival award at the Moscow Film Festival. They have been eventually managed to get themselves to a film festival in Vienna, even though they were followed by uh, the miners, they were able to avoid them, and they got sanctuary in the uh, US embassy and, uh, and got to sanctuary uh, eventually in South Korea. Jin has died, Shoy has still lives in South Korea.
Okay. 